Sherry Diana from Adirondack Girl at Heart. I teach vintage and antique lovers how to create successful antique businesses that they love. One of the ways I do that is through these videos and through my website, Adirondack Girl at Heart. Today I'm sharing 32 finds from one single store. So my sweet husband and I were recently in Vermont and we stopped at a thrift store slash antique store that happened to be going out of business, sadly. And uh, the, <laughs> the deal was you could fill a box for $10. So I filled two boxes and these are the things that I got. So the first thing I picked up, well, it wasn't the first, but my husband found it. It's a brass horn, super cool. Unfortunately, lots of damage to the bowl. I think these are replaceable. Um, they originally had 40, $48 on that, right? So I got 32 items for $20. So that means each item was less than a dollar. So, yeah. Uh, I think that I would price it about 30 to $35 in my antique booth. Um, might want to see if um, if this is replaceable. Not sure. Any thoughts on that? Okay. So I came across quite a number of um, tins and uh, packaging. I've never come across these. This is Prismex crayons. And they actually do have some crayons inside. Um, nothing spectacular. It's not like, uh, you know, it came with the original crayons. Although, uh, I think I did find um, one that looked like it might have been original. And then there's some Crayola crayons in here, if anybody's interested <laughs> in this part. Anyway, so I think these are worth about $10 each. Maybe more because they're, they're uncommon, right? I do have an article on my website all about tins, so you might want to check that out. I'll link to it below. Here is a box of Crayola crayons in an older box, maybe 1940s or so, and it does have uh, a full set of crayons in there with the older labels on the crayons, and I haven't sold any of these in a long time, but I'm going to say because the box is in really good shape, and um, it's got the crayons. I'm going to say also maybe $10 on that. And then here's another box. So this is really from like the 1910s or the 1920s. Just a very, very, very cool box. And inside it has pencils. So it says crayons, but it's really um, colored pencils. And I'm going to say um, maybe 15 on that one. And then here is a box. Um, it needs a little bit of glue on this side. I think that I will glue that. These are blend well crayons. I just thought this was so interesting, the different brands of crayons that have been available through the years. So maybe, you know, $10 on that one too. And then here is a, um, this is a, I think it's a candle. Actually, I have no idea what it is. <laughs> I feel like I knew at one time, but is it tea? Is it a tea? Uh, it's from Argentina. Nice light blue color, right? That would go nice nicely with the tin collection. They had $10 on it, and I would likely price it up at the same, $10. Now, I found a couple of displays. So, um... They are missing their easel, so these would be like hanging necklace display. And there were two of those. And then a little um, plate holder. Plate holder, yes, a little plate holder. Originally they had 488 on that one. And I picked up an ice cream scoop. Got an article planned on these. I think they're so cool. This one has no markings. They had a price of 22. Um, I Most of the uh, unmarked scoops from this era uh, go for about 10 or $12. I picked up these two uh, 
than geese. I think they will look great with a textile hanging from them, right? A banner or something. So I'll add that to my stash, my extremely large stash of thingies. <laughs> uh, at Christmas time, I put bottle brush trees in um, old doorknobs. I will wax these a little with my, um, my wood salve to uh, clean them up and to make them look a little bit better. So these I sell for $10 with the bottle brush tree. So obviously I can make two with that one. Oh, here's another little package. I, you know, I had the boxes, I came across the stuff, I threw it in there. I just thought graphically that was, that was appealing. And I threw this in also not in great shape. Um, jackknife. I'll probably just get rid of that or put a dollar on it, something like that. And then a set of eight uh, knobs, like ceramic knobs. I use these a lot on furniture that needs knobs. And also you can, if you have a strip of wood or um, even a yardstick, probably not a yardstick, a strip of wood, you can put knobs on them and create a hanger that you can sell, like an old piece of barn board or a beautiful you know, piece of antique wood. And she had 988 on those. But I, like I said, I'll be keeping and using those. So probably the best, from my point of view, find is this little potted meat jar it's shippum's high class potted meat chichester or chichester i'm not sure how to pronounce that but um these sell super well on etsy um some of them have a little bit more graphically interestingness <laughs> than this one and it's not in perfect shape it's got some chips a uh, couple little tiny little dings there. Still pretty good shape for something this old. And uh, they sell for anywhere from like 40 to $60. I think mine's going to be on the lower end. Uh, also, people really like when these have browned, right? When the crazing has gotten brown. And we don't really have any of that except for on the bottom where it doesn't serve any good purpose. Yeah, so very cool. This ruler I thought was neat, the Standard Engraving Company. They had a 1098 on that. Um, it's photo engravers, not sure what that is exactly, but I would probably price that at about five, five or six dollars. It's not perfect. It's got some paint residue there and it's rubbed off a little bit on that side, but this side, is really nice. So maybe maybe six or seven, six or seven dollars. Alrighty, I picked up some beads. I will uh, just probably sell it as is for like eight dollars. They have they have eight dollars on it. Um, I could also take it apart and use it um, on other craft projects. We'll have to see about that very sweet little hanky i am working on an article about hankies so it's got some pulled work here right we and uh some embroidery and then the tatted lace really sweet they had a dollar 22 on it it's not in great shape it's got some like browning uh, on on it browning so that's probably why the low price picked up a couple of bottles. This one is Hood's Compound Extract Sarsaparilla. So it's got embossing on the front. The side it says New York, St. Louis. New York, St. Louis. And the other side says uh, CI or GI, CI Hood and Co. Right there. Just a really, just a really nice, nice bottle. In good shape, no chips. It's got some uh, cloudiness that it would be hard to, if impossible, to remove. They had $26 on it. I would probably put 10, 10 or 12. And then this one I really, really liked, and I would have liked to try to work on the cloudiness, but I can't get the top off. A little rusty top. And this was also 1866. 18, 
Oh, no, not also. This one was 1866. Nice shape, but that cloudiness is a bother, is bothersome. So about 10, eight or $10, I would say. Okay, I keep hitting this thing here. I'm gonna show you, get it out of the way. So this is an ornament display. She had $31.95 on it. So I'm gonna use this at Christmas time to display ornaments. And I picked up these four at the same sale. So a little wooden ornament, I will use that for um, creating Christmas decorations that I sell at a Christmas craft show. Same with this little antique looking Santa. And then this is pretty, this is like a little uh, etched mirror. Probably priced that about $6 to sell. And then my son's nickname is Grizz or Grizzly. So he gets a lot of bear stuff. <laughs> Whenever I come across it, I pick it up. So um, that will be in his stocking this Christmas. So that will be very useful at Christmas time, right? Okay, so are you familiar with pyrography? I don't know if I'm saying that right. Pyrography, <laughs> pyrography. <laughs> so that was a craft in Victorian times where you took a, a heated uh, tool and you would trace these designs and it would uh, burn. It was a, like a burner, it would burn into these lines and you'd have this little piece of artwork. So um, I do would like to write an article about them, some that that process someday. So I picked, I just threw these into one of my boxes, so that I will have examples of what the craft looked like before it was worked on, right? So I'm gonna store those somewhere where I'll remember. <laughs> and a um. This is not, I thought it was a coloring book at first, but it's not, it's a pad of paper. So uh, with some kind of cartoon, it says Walter Lance Productions, Walter Lance um, characters. So this is like a 1940s-ish uh, time period, I would say. And I have other um, booklets and um, paper items like this that I think I will collect together and sell as a lot on Etsy journal uh, makers, scrapbookers, like love things like this. So that's my plan for that. And okay, so my last find, let me just check. Yes, my last find from that thrift store. So remember 32 items for $20 is uh, this, this is another craft. So it's sampler cards. This is an example of a paper punch craft. So just a few, recently I wrote a whole article about perforated paper punch, German paper punch. It goes by several different names. Um, but this is a kit for young people, young girls probably. And it came with these cards ready to basically you're embroidering on them. All right, so there's a sampler, there's some strawberries, very pretty floral, and here's a bird, and then here's a fish. This was meant to be a bookmark, so this one is completed. I don't know if you can see that, that, that it's already been done. You can see on the back the, the threads there. So um, this is gonna be great to add to that article. Examples of crafting, paper punch crafting. And then it came also with um, the embroidery thread to complete the project. So I just think this is fascinating. I hope you find it fascinating as well. I hope you have a great day. And as always, happy hunting.